Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Astronomer Live, uh, where we go through some more kind of live quick demo style um, <clears throat> use cases, do some live coding, uh, and just generally have fun with it. Um, so today, what we're going to be building is an ELT workflow with Airflow and Databricks. Um, and so essentially what we're doing here is we're going to ingest some files um, around country information, uh, countries usage of renewable energy. Then we're going to select three different countries from that, uh, then save those files into an S3 bucket, um, and then load that data into Databricks for it to be transformed. Um, so within Databricks, we're going to join those three country data sets into one, and then we're going to transform that large aggregate data set um, before loading that file and creating a graph out of it um, and just saving that to our local directory, just ease of use here, um, as well as deleting the intake file so this can be a repeatable workflow. Um, and so if you want to follow along, I have put the link in the description uh, to the kind of guide here. And here you can see the graph that we're going to build at the end, which is the percentage of solar, hydro, and wind power in Sweden. Um, so what we can then do now, um, so we've, to, if you want to follow along, do this. Um, the way this starts out, uh, it just, again, links in the description, is you'll just go to this link, uh, clone the project from the Astronomer GitHub, and then download it to your local machine. Um, so if I switch over into my VS Code view here, and perfect. So here we can see our uh, basic file structure. So it's just structured like um, any other Airflow environment. Um, or any other Astro uh, Docker image. So here we have um, our renewable analysis uh, DAG code. So here, and before I kind of get into the process of building DAG, I want to just walk you through all the different things that are included within this directory. Um, so number one, and also if you want to do this, you're obviously going to need to have a Databricks account. So here within this Databricks account will be your um, some code that you'll need to actually load into Databricks and create notebooks out of. So you'll basically just copy and paste this code. There are some credentials for your AWS account up there. Um, and so what you'll do is just load this in, add this as notebook under just your username in your AWS account. Um, and then you're going to set that path uh, just because Remember, you use whatever user you stored it under um, later on when we set that within the DAG. Um, it seems obvious, but just one thing to call out. And so just to give you a look of the data here, so here we're taking some uh, information around the share of hydroelectricity in countries around the world. So we have Afghanistan, then Africa, um, Algeria, American Samoa. I'm not sure why Africa is just an aggregate, but you can see huge file. Um, and we have similar files for the percentage of solar and wind power in those countries as well. Um, and then here you can see the graph uh, save that we produce at the end. So that's our include directory. That's if you know, were to deploy this in production, this would all be included, um, but it's not related to Airflow directly. Then we have our environment file. And so here, this is just kind of a user's choice. So here's where I've set um, some of my credentials for this account. So I have my, sorry, I didn't realize my screen is, a little bit tilted to the right, there we go. Um, so here we have my uh, session tokens for AWS. Don't worry, these are already out of date um, and don't work. Um, so here, these are actually gonna be overridden because I added them in the UI, but if you wanna uh, add these in the environment file, you can just do that um, here. So after you've added these, you know, let's say to your environment file, what you'll then do is go to your Docker file and here, what this is just saying is just to allow uh, Airflow to use Astro Databricks, um, which just I think gets added when you actually install the um, Astro Databricks package here. So here you have the Astro provider. So there is a Databricks uh, supported provider, and then there's also an Astro supported provider. Recommend using the Astro supported one just because it's a little more up to date. It has a little better functionality, um, and it can also be asynchronous. So if you want to just call it and then set the response to be, you know, passed over the trigger, so you don't have to take a worker slot, you can do that. Um, and then you also just have the Amazon providers because we're using an S3 bucket here. Um, our Astro SDK for Python just so simplifies some of the code. Um, we have Seaborn and Matplotlib, and so these are the just two Python libraries we're going to be using to actually. Um, create that visualization at the end of this uh, pipeline. So if we go back into our DAGs folder um, and go into Databricks ELT DAG, 
we can start actually building our deck. So the first thing we're going to do here is import all of our different packages and libraries. So here, import my airflow decorators, uh, pendulum, just for proper date time, uh, Astro SQL, just to make it easier to pass SQL statements. Um, then we have my Astro files, just so I can use kind of files as a data set object within Airflow. Um, also the table object, just to create table objects, and that makes it easier to ingest files from my local directory and then uh, reference them as a table um, in S3 or you know when I'm uploading them to Databricks. Then we also have our Databricks notebook operator because we're gonna have to run those notebooks. And then we're also have the Databricks workflow task group operator. Um, and that's because the Databricks workflow, if you create a task group with this Databricks workflow task group and then put your Databricks workflows inside of it, you can make use of the cheaper Databricks um, workflow compute while still using Airflow to kind of manage it all. Um, so you don't have that fragmented view. Then we also have the S3 delete objects operator pandas to classic data manipulation, and then Seaborn and matplotlib for the visualizations as I talked about earlier. Um, and then, so before we can even get started writing all the code, we're gonna have a ton of different variables you're gonna need to set. And this is typical kind of anytime you're working with Databricks. Um, so number one, have our country, my, your Databricks login email, an S3 bucket you're gonna be using the AWS region for your AWS credentials, your Databricks notebooks name. So I recommend just naming them. If you notice I had the include directory, or sorry, within my Databricks notebooks, I just have join data, transform code, and that's a notebook code. So I just added them as join data and transform data. Um, then, just go zoom in a little bit. Um, we have my uh, Databricks notebook pass. This is just being dynamically created from my login email and then uh, my two notebooks, just so I don't have to bother uh, hard coding that all in. Always best practices use some Jinja templating. Then we also are saving my solar CSV path, hydro, just all the paths to our individual data sets. Um, an S3 folder you're gonna create for your country subset. Uh, and then it also has three folder you're gonna create for your transform data to be outputted to that we're gonna use for that visualization. Your Databricks result file path. So here we're setting the path. So within that transform data file folder, we're going to put that country data that we're going to transform um, around that Sweden's use or the United States in this case's use of hydroelectric and or hydro wind and solar. Then you have your Databricks job cluster key, so just what you're going to call your Databricks cluster. Then you're going to reference your Databricks connection ID, your AWS connection ID, and your DB database connection. So I'm just using the local uh, pan or Postgres database, and that's just for some of the local file manipulation before we load it, um, and then also saving the results. And so here we have uh, then the Databricks connection ID and our AWS connection ID, which will then be used for a couple different tasks. And then finally, our S3 folder, our country subset, and our Databricks job cluster specifications. So here you're just defining what kind of cluster you're going to use within Databricks. Um, so Spark version, node type, uh, what you know, do you want to install PySpark Python? So we're using Python in notebooks, so we need PySpark in, uh, enabled. Then we're just gonna have Low security mode, single user, standard, runtime engine, standard, and number of workers, just one, because we don't really need to do anything too crazy here. The data files are pretty small. Um, and so after this, the next step, we've got all of our credentials defined. We can then start defining our transformations. So here we have our select country task. So here, this is where we are going to be um, selecting from those ingestion tables just our specific country and so what we're going to do is then expand this so it takes in the file pass for all three of those files um, and gets us united states is share for each of those categories of EVA energy then after that we'll go to the aql data frame and what this will do is actually is for creating our graph so this will ingest our transform data and then create a graph using cplot or seaborn and matplotlib. Uh, here, just kind of setting some of the title variables for that. Um, and again, just dynamically reading in the country name. So you can just keep swapping out the country and this whole pipeline will adjust uh, pretty easily. So now we've gotten our task API task defined for the Astro SDK, we can create our DAG. So call this renewable analysis DAG. Um, and then we are going to load in some files. So here, 
this is where we're going to um, expand it. So we'll create those three tasks and end my uh, session token because I'm just using temporary credentials. What we'll have here is our task group. So within our task group, we have our two notebook operators. So this is just gonna run our first join data notebook and then transform data. Um, so here have join data, set our database connection ID, notebook path, source, job cluster. So the job cluster specification or name. So after we launch it, we have to then say, hey, run these notebooks using that specific cluster. And then here you have notebook one uh, being bitmapped into notebook two. And now after that, so after we've gotten those files ingested, we also are gonna to wanna to delete them so we can run this over and over again for different countries if we might want to. Um, so just deleting all those files um, within that folder country subset. Um, and then we're going to load a file from Databricks or from the Databricks file result path. So the file path where we transform that data and then output it to. So that's defined within our uh, Databricks notebook, which I'll go into a set. We'll go over to the Databricks UI and kind of look what's happening there in a second. So finally, we've got all our tasks in here. Now we are going to save these files as three, just define all of our bitmappings and going into task group, loading those files to a database, deleting them uh, from S3 and then creating an astro, uh, creating a graph um, out of that table of results that we're loading into our database. Then finally, we're gonna clean up any temporary tables with the AQL utility tasks. So this will just clean up any temporary tables we use within um, our DAG and we'll define our DAG as renewable analysis DAG. Um, and so that's all we need to do there on the DAG side of things. So now what we can do is kick it over to um, the browser and I'll go over to Databricks and show you just what those notebooks look like. And then we'll put it all together and I'll show you what it looks like within the DAG. Um, so here in my um, environment, so a couple things you'll need to note um, just so when you're connecting to Databricks, you're going to need to create a personal access token. So the way you'll do that is by going to developer, manage, and then generate new token. Um, and then that's what you're going to use for your connection in the Airflow UI. So actually I'll just finish up the Airflow stuff. Um, so here within your Databricks connection, what you'll be doing is having your host, your Databricks URL, and then login token, and then using that login token to actually access. Um, and then we'll do it back here. Um, you'll also just define your AWS connection as you would any AWS connection here. I have my C uh, access key, secret access key, and my uh, session token because I'm just using temporary credentials because uh, I don't want any of you getting access to my AWS environment. Um, even if I, you are really quick on taking down these credentials. Uh, and then I'm also just using our backend database, the Postgres one, port 5432, uh, just to store, just because it's spun up alongside of our airflow environment. Definitely don't do this in production, but just because it's, I'm, I want to make this easy and kind of self-contained. I did that. I didn't want to have to bother standing up a whole Postgres environment on my local machine. So now we've got Airflow all ready to go. You, know, you got your access token, brought it into, into Databricks. You also will need to define your join data notebooks. Where here, we're just you know creating our connections again to AWS, bringing in our bucket name, S3 folder uh, name. We have... Um, a lot of someone, so this is basically just performing the operation, bringing all of our data uh, out from S3. So we've got to list it all, then load the data, then collect the name of each country to find the results, then join um, all those data tables together. So the extracted data for each country from each source that's been clean or from each type of data energy, adding it to one, then converting it into a pandas data frame, removing any duplicated columns because some of them are the same, probably the country across all three of them. Um, and then saving that within S3 as an intermediary fire, file storage, fire file storage, sorry. Um, and then we have transform data where we are going to, again, connect S3, bring out all our files from S3. Then we're going to calculate, um, you know, summate all of the electricity usage. So just kind of some or 100 and then say, hey, okay, so what percentage is solar? What percentage is hydro? What percentage is um, wind? Um, and then appending that to the data frame and then converting each of those into pandas and then loading them into S3 again, um, which will then take out of S3 and bring it into our Postgres database. Um, so then once you've got all that set up, we can run our renewable analysis DAG. So here, 
we have, and this is going to take like five minutes to actually, or a couple, not five minutes, like three minutes to actually run. On your first run, it's going to take a little while and fail because it has to create the cluster. Um, I haven't been able to get it to not fail with that issue um, before it actually creates a notebook. So it's, be, I think, because Databricks doesn't create the cluster in time, even though it says it does um, to Airflow, it doesn't actually create in time for that first job to run, but all subsequent runs should be fine. And you can kind of see that reflected here. Um, and if I open up the graph to you as well, so click on this, you can see we have congestion tables. These are the map task instances for each of our uh, files. So um, we're going to do details, render template, you can see bringing out from our hydro column, um, and then, or outputting it into our database. You see our input file, that hydroelectricity usage. So adding those three columns together, uh, we're just crossing the 18% threshold, which is pretty brutal. Uh, it's not not super great. Um, Got to get that number, pump it up a little bit higher. Uh, but super cool workflow, um, especially just trying to experiment with, you know, doing LT within Databricks uh, with a nice little visual result at the end, because that's always fun, you know, getting a nice little picture to look at. Um, so that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, session of Astro Live, and I will see you next week. Data guy out. Peace. Like Databricks doesn't create the cluster in time, even though it says it does. Uh, to Airflow, it doesn't actually create time for the first time to run, but.